Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 9th, 2023 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Burton. Burton here. Knauer. Knauer here. Sangster. Sangster here. Weissar. Weissar here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Prinzing. Prinzing here. Gray here. Okay, we have minutes from the February 9th meeting. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. And can we entertain a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right, Doug, do you want to take us through the table items and All open right. our work session? All right, so tabled application number one, the path stone de mixed use development. Um, at this time, we haven't received any new information, so if you're comfortable, you can go ahead and continue table. Okay, I'll move to continue tabling. Second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right, tabled application number two, the Chick-fil-A on Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Um, so we reached out to the applicant for an update to get a progress on the application. Uh, we did hear back from them. Um, Chick-fil-A is having an ongoing conversation with the property owner, um, and they're hoping to resubmit uh, within the next two weeks. So hopefully we'll have something in time for your next meeting. So move to continue tabling. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Uh, likewise, staff reached out to uh, rg &E, our third tabled application. Um, and we, uh, they had initially said they expected to be back by this meeting. Uh, we reached out again and received no response. So we have no new information. Okay, I'd say that let's continue tabling for at least another couple of months okay. before sure. we do anything else. You want to? Yes. Move? So moved. Second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Aye. Knauer, aye. <laughs> All right, tabled application number four, uh, 2305 Penfield Road, two lot subdivision. Um, so staff again sent another PRC memo on Tuesday. Um, we had 48 comments on the subdivision and site plan. Um, so I know engineering still has a, a lot of concerns um, uh, with the design. Additionally, um, the planning department is very concerned. We've now multiple times requested that the subdivision plat that is submitted be stamped by a licensed land surveyor. Um, it's typically a submission requirement. We've given them good grace to get this far, um, but it's something that we need to see. It's something that needs to be on the plat for it to be filed. Okay. So we obviously, uh, I'm assuming that we've made that clear to yes. them, new, if not just once, but maybe more than one time. And I guess we'll wait for them to get the surveyor stamp. Yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll move to table. Second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right, tabled application number five, uh, the Go Car Wash, 1922 Empire Boulevard. Um, so we sent out a PRC memo um, and received responses. Staff in the engineering department has a few concerns on, I believe it's stormwater, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have some, yeah, stormwater comments, but I think it's pretty technical in nature. It's nothing that would, you know, we can handle through pre-mylar and stuff like that, so. Nothing they wouldn't be able to overcome? No. 
So um, ahead of the meeting, staff did complete um, the seeker part two, part three for your review, as well as a draft approval resolution um, with mostly standard um, right. language. Uh, we have no special conditions. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm comfortable with this. Are you guys? I think so, yeah. Comments? Sounds like it's pretty much technical. Okay. Somebody want to move to approve the so EAF? Moved. I'll second. Authorize my signature. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. And I'll move to uh, uh, authorize staff to uh, approve the application. Complete, complete the uh, uh, approval resolution for the board. Okay. okay. I will second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Just want to clarify, that was a motion for approval, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so that's it for our tabled applications. We do have um, three administrative actions. Um, the first administrative action, uh, 1657 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, uh, the Arbors at Penfield. Um, so that was a mixed use development that the board approved subdivision and site plan for um, the first phase and overall at the end of 2021, the remaining phases in 2022. Um, they're going through the financing process and um, their bank has requested that the lot lines be shifted for the three lots that were proposed so that all of the amenities for phase one is on the same lot. Um, so they're not uh, looking to get any additional lots or looking um, at significantly changing it. It would mostly be moving one line further east so that the main stormwater facility um, and some of the accessory features for the community center will all be on the same lot. Okay, so really just a invisible lot shift. Yes, it's all gonna remain under the same ownership. Um, in this case, uh, it's just uh, the bank looking to ensure that um, all of the amenities for um, phase one are on the same lot. So there's no, there's no real change, substantial change. It's not gonna change anything on the site plan. Um, and it doesn't result in any substantial change to the development or the order of development. Okay. Uh, anybody have an issue with this? No. <clears throat> okay. I um, can entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Okay. All right, our second uh, administrative action is 2334 Browncroft Boulevard. Uh, this is likewise a lot line shift. Um, the gentleman owns uh, property off of old Browncroft Boulevard. It is surrounded on two sides by um, remaining lands of Baker Commodities. <laughs> um, they are looking to sell the house and um, there are some features of their property that are on the neighboring property, so they're looking to shift the lot line and pick up a little bit of uh, land from uh, Baker Commodities. Engineering department have any issues planning? No. No, it's zoning compliant. It would be zoning compliant. Okay. Any other things we could should be concerned about with this? Not that I'm aware of. So that that addition is the hashed area? Yep, and yeah, so they'll okay. be picking up that, that area okay. from the neighbor. Um, so uh, I believe they have a part of a driveway that is technically on the neighbor's property, a shed and a gazebo oh, yeah. that okay. is technically on the neighbor's property. So this would be uh, bringing the property in greater conformance with the code. Okay. I, I don't have an issue with it. No. Somebody wanna? Sure, I'll move to approve. Second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right, um, our third administrative item, uh, the mixed use code update. Um, 
So as the board is aware, um, <clears throat> the town board has been going through the process of drafting a revision to the mixed use um, ordinance. Um, in the past, when they, they had their first public hearing, they reached out to the planning board. Um, since you are the board, that would be tasked with review of the subdivision and site plan approval within the mixed use district. Um, to get the feedback of the planning board um, uh, through a memo to the town board. Um, staff has drafted. Yep, memo. read the memo. I'm comfortable. I think we've all read it. I'll move to send it. Okay. We have a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Okay, that's all our work session items, correct? That is all of our work session items. All right, so <clears throat> for those of you here and also the millions watching uh, around the planet online, um, we typically, uh, last couple of years we've started our public hearings right after we get done with our work session items versus taking a break if we get done early and waiting until seven o'clock. So we're gonna move directly into the public hearing portion of our meeting, um, assuming our applicant is ready to go. Uh, so you can come on up and just for some housekeeping uh, items, if the way the process will work is the applicant will come up and present their project, the board will ask them questions, and then we'll open up for public comment from the audience, and if anyone's watching online and wants to call in, you can call the town at 585-340-8771. You can also make a submission online at www.penfield.org. And there should be a link to this meeting on the front page of the website where you can submit your comments. We have a screen here that I'm uh, tracking. So if we see phone calls coming in or uh, online submissions. If you're here present and would like to speak to this application, when the time comes, I'll call your name or you raise your hand and I'll call you up. Please come to the empty table here, sit down, and speak into the microphone and, and address the board and not the applicant. And also please state your name and address for the record. Did I forget anything? Okay, Doug, would you please read our, our uh, public hearing item? All right, public hearing application one. BME Associates, 10 Lift Bridge Lane East, Fairport, New York, 14450, on behalf of Conifer Penfield Associates, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield, for preliminary and final site plan approval for proposed redevelopment of a portion of the existing building and parking area with associated site improvements on the 8.77 acres located at 2067 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, the property is now or formerly owned by Conifer Penfield Associates and zoned General Business GB within the 250-441 Overlay District. Application number 23P-0004, SBL 140.5-1-1.2 backslash 2067. Okay, welcome. Do you have a PowerPoint or something that, or any type of computer presentation that you need to tie into? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is James Criticos. I'm with BME Associates. Uh, this is Fred Rinaldi with Conifer Penfield Associates, the applicant. Uh, we're excited to be back in front of you guys after a couple years uh, from the last time we were here for the Starbucks application, uh, which is immediately in front um, on the same uh, plaza parcel. Um, that project has been fully built out. It's been doing very well, um, as well as with all the traffic movements, which I know was a point of concern uh, from the last application. Uh, so when we were here previously for those, um, we mentioned to you guys that we would be looking to do something with the rear um, office building out here, which was previously used for <coughs> medical office space. Um, with this proposed application, we're gonna be looking to take down 
the front portion of the building. Uh, it's about 2,500 square feet of the gross area, plus another 500 square feet that is the front canopy. Um, so it's about an 18% reduction in the building interior space. Um, with that, we're gonna be kind of looking to give it a new front face, um, kind of touch up the, the perimeters, um, add some perimeter roof <coughs> screening areas there. It'll help kind of break up the uh, existing pitch um, and kind of just liven up the, the rear of this property that's uh, not really been utilized much over the past couple of years. Um, with the front space that we're gonna be removing from the building, uh, we're gonna add some additional parking spaces, um, 12 right in front of the building, um, as well as kind of have a expanded sidewalk plaza area uh, consistent with some of the other depths of space um, in the rest of the plaza. This allows us to have a little bit of a usable space out front. Um, I know the graphic you guys have on the screen here depicts some seating. Um, we're kind of tossing around some ideas of how to utilize that space with um, you know, features like these or as well as maybe some like boulder seating areas, uh, different things. Um, the uses in this building, uh, I think they've developed a little bit since we made our original application. Uh, when we originally submitted, I think the uses were all intended to be either office and or retail. Um, however, we do expect to have a couple food uses in the space at this point. Um, I think about 4,500 square feet of the remaining uh, Seven or 11,700 square feet building um, will be food uses. Um, so obviously you guys would have to issue conditional uh, use permits for those. Um, so we'll be providing uh, the rest of the information you guys need in terms of occupancy, um, some floor plans, and uh, the different application forms and such to include that. Um, Utility-wise and drainage-wise, this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna use all the existing water service, uh, downspout services, sanitary sewer. Um, so everything's already existing to the building. We're just gonna maintain and or reconnect as necessary. Um, water in the plaza is all private. It's all master metered and backflowed um, in the building that's south of the Starbucks. Um, so it's all private water mains, so we don't need to um, interact with a lot of the normal agency reviewers. Um, I think. The only one we need to comply with is Mineral County Pure Waters um, for a uh, county planning purposes. And we've engaged them, we're just waiting on final feedback. Um, in terms of landscaping, we're gonna kinda keep it minimized um, in this front area. We're just gonna be proposing some shrubs at the northern and southern um, islands. Uh, we really wanna just maximize visibility here just because of the somewhat non-linear um, parking lot configuration just to make sure that um, you know pedestrians moving around this area that we're gonna kind of liven up a little bit um, you know have the ability to be seen um, with no uh, sightline obstructions um, the parking out here as I mentioned we're gonna be putting uh, sorry it's uh, 12, 12 net increase spaces so there's a uh, uh, 10 in the front as well as two extra we're gonna be gained from just relocating the ADA um, spaces to the front, so we'll gain those um, loading, unloading areas back. Um, besides that, we did respond to comments received from the town PRC, as well as the landscape consultant, um, and as well as the Mineral County DRC. Those went out this morning. I apologize for the, the late responses, but I think majority of the comments were pretty straightforward. Um, the few things we did want to discuss um, with you guys was um, the fact that we don't want to do any new dumpster enclosures out here. Um, we will be using the existing ones that are already on site. Um, we do not want to do any bike racks at this time. Um, we don't really have a, a need for people entering or exiting the site at this time based on you know, tenant experiences and the, uh, how the plaza has been operating. Obviously, if that does change in the future, I know Fred is more than willing to incorporate those into the project um, for his tenants. Um, there was a question about the uh, harris Wayland Park connection. Um, I think when we were here last time, that idea was kind of um, fluttered out a little bit, so we stopped um, uh, pursuing it. However, with the commentary, uh, uh, we think the town is still willing to make that connection. It is something we would like to explore and facilitate. Um, so we'd be happy to kind of investigate that further and work with the town on you know, appropriate connection location uh, means and methods and um, you know work through the planning and engineering department to come up with a game plan.
Just, just real quick before this uh, topic is cemented, my name's Fred Rinaldi. Introduce yourself. The uh, landlord and uh, and really manager uh, with uh, at, at the campus here, and have been for uh, for some time. I, I may look uh, somewhat familiar, plus some age, some age aging. Um, I just wanted I just wanted to introduce a, a, a detail that was not carried over to the application. Uh, we are going to be instituting across the entire campus a uh, a bike uh, hosting program. Uh, the racks will be a little more uh, custom to the to the projects. They're not going to be traditional bike racks, but each building uh, will have will have bike uh, share features. One of the reasons that we keep bringing up the topic of the connection to the park is that we found incredible value using uh, uh, and, and partnering with municipalities to celebrate public spaces. The opportunity to increase foot traffic, vehicle traffic, purpose for interfacing with all these things we work so hard to bring to life, that is uh, one, one of the reasons that, well, really the, these four corners continue to be celebrated. Uh, we have a, I have a, a similar case study in the city of Rochester where we have a project called the Culverwood Armory which sits across the street from Cobbs Hill Park. Cobbs Hill Park is a Frederick Olmsted Park uh, and is incredibly celebrated. And I often will hear uh, inquiry as to, wouldn't it be nice to have another 100 plus thousand square feet of commercial across the street? And my quick answer is no. The quality of life born by having access to these features, especially a park like Harris Whalen, which has every category of use, including sledding and uh, the fireworks show, Fourth of July, you know, it's, it's, it's an important feature. And when people ask how we embed amenities into these projects, it's not just the obvious ones. It's the way that we create quality of life by offering an opportunity to enjoy surface area. People like being able to get out of their normal routine, their normal pattern that includes customers and includes employees of the businesses, especially ours at, at, at Parkside. We have worked very hard over the last couple decades to allow Parkside to be nimble to the changing economic corridor that is 250 and 441. And just in the last few years, you can see how awesome that change is. Uh, in your administrative notes, you talked about uh, Chick-fil-A looking to enter the market. They are one of the most intelligent and methodical reviewers of trade areas. And they don't just do it for today, they do it to be future-proof because they love what they do. It's a business that's quite literally closed on Sundays. And you know the presence of these things is something to be uh, celebrated. So it, although I would like it not to be tethered to this application, it is very much important to our organization that we uh, capitalize. I'm not looking for the town to pay for this, but I would like for there to be a, a formal uh, pass through to enjoy the park so that families and, and children don't have to uh, cascade and jump over a creek and move through the woods. And uh, you know, simple things that I started to pay attention to now that I have young children is you know, we have uh, seen over the last few years an increase in, um, in uh, tick incidences in areas and, and other things like that. So if we can um, make safer the use of the park by way of this uh, feature, we would love to, uh, to play a role in that. Thanks. Um, so I think the last item beyond that that I was going to bring up uh, was a comment that came through the Monroe County DRCs uh, just in regards to charging stations. Um, and I'm sure Fred has been employing them on several of our other projects we're uh, involved with. So I'm sure there is probably some consideration um, that we would have to incorporating those into the plaza at some time. Um, otherwise, I think um, we're here to just get the commentary and input from you guys before we kind of tighten up the plans a little bit and then hopefully come back before you guys and um, look to get an approval and then uh, start construction shortly after. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Do you want to start? <coughs> yeah, so um, I think that it probably makes sense to have the bike racks and the EV charging stations and the connectivity piece um, documented that it's not a part of this application that 
Yeah, I mean, you, you can certainly let the board and the town know that it's something that you would like to pursue in the future, but probably just as easy to not tie those to this application. And, um, you know, the county didn't say you had to have EV charging stations. It was a recommendation. And EV charging stations are, are changing and morphing weekly. Um, so the, the technology is, is growing like crazy and the types of batteries that you need to design charging stations for um, and the um, amperage on the charging stations is also morphing. So it makes, makes sense to, uh, uh, to move that along you know, further down the road when you can tie that in and not just for the folks that are visiting this building but other buildings in the complex as well. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the things that are in the rendering here. So um, shows this beautiful seating area. You suggested that uh, perhaps that's not quite what you're planning on doing. Um, do you want to just share with the board what you, what you think you want to do? Um, larger boulder seating areas and then kind You're of gonna have to area. talk into a microphone. Sorry. So James said yeah if you can hold those up uh, for, you know walk through. So Jim I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with a concept that has been around forever but uh, spoken of a little bit it's actually strange sitting down in this public forum. I'm not used to this but it's, it's nice. <laughs> um, the um, none of us are there's there you know the concept of biophilic design where you take the inside out and the outside in and celebrate uh, natural materials and, and plantings and interior agriculture. You know, it's it's a it's a relationship that starts outside the space. You you set you set an emotional connection. You try to elicit a very specific response from from the end user. It's not just it's not just the customer. By the way, we're also building this for the employees. Remember that. Um, so we have uh, started to apply this philosophy to quite literally every one of our our properties. So it would be our wish that in lieu of uh, completely traditional uh, ways to enjoy seating and and uh, and being outside the facilities themselves that we introduce a a rhythm of, of natural elements and uh, and one of the things that it, that would be quite awesome especially as you see us kind of let that spread across the campus would be the use of, of a flat uh, large uh, boulder cadence that would be rhythmed with a natural uh, grass uh, we like the grass because it uh, it offers a lot of things. It, ha it is incredibly resilient. It it has a great movement uh, throughout the season, and we also uh, we don't cut the grass until until spring. Uh, so we leave it, and it's beautiful during the winter. And we are a dynamic uh, four season environment here, at least for the time being. And so this is an application we feel w is uh, quite appropriate, and also leads to what sits uh, just to the west of us, which is the, the park. So. I think we'll probably ask our architectural consultant to take a look at this. Sure. Um, so you're going to want to decide on, you know, which plan you'd like to have reviewed. This will be the one. The one that James is holding right now. Yes, sir. Okay, not the one that's down below. That's the same. Uh, it pr predates the the application submittal. My, my apologies. Okay. We'll, uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. You talking about this one that they no, on the screen? No, that's. Are you talking about? No. Yeah, um, it's got two alternates, and then the just, one that they, that they put like in our the package. Same they're very similar. Other end of the building. Um, yeah. So what we'll do to just kind of document this with our updates and things, we'll incorporate um, <clears throat> some boulder locations as well as some plantings on the actual okay. landscape plan. Um, that way, it can be reviewed. Uh, you know, by and all the office. occupancy data and all these things, and then of plan course. can take a look at that all at the same time. Correct. Of course. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have, AJ. Okay. Are there any tenants in there now, currently? It is uh, completely vacant. Okay. And do you, I mean, it was primarily a medical office, right? Correct. So do you, play, do you foresee it completely changing use, or do you foresee some partial medical use and then partial non-medical use, or is that too soon to tell? So the the evolution of the needs of the medical space have changed dramatically since, well, my father built that building and, and operated that. Uh, right across the street at the Platinum Office Park, you'll see what I believe to be the future of how uh, these medical 
functions live together. They want to have a catalog of offerings. They want to have imaging next to general practitioner and, and sports medicine, things like that. It offers an opportunity for the, the well, two patient uh, yes. to go from one right to the next to the next. Okay. And, and create commonality in the way that they service the common areas. Um, and that's become especially important in recent years where protocol for the safe access and use of these facilities has been very different than what we're used to. So these campuses allow for it to be a little more nimble. That is uh, a movement that's been taking place over the last 20 years as they've, they've uh, kind of merged into these many, uh, many medical campuses. Uh, we have another version of it in Penfield at 2000 and 2010 Empire Boulevard where we have uh, general practitioner, we have, uh, we have lab, we have nephrology, hemodialysis, and that, that we believe to be the future of how you'll see these medical offices um, find, uh, find their location. Uh, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't envision any medical office entering this, but I, I could very, very well see a traditional office wanting to come here. Think about the prospect of being able to, uh, on your way to work, have your Starbucks mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, take a run in the park, a bike, and also use all the awesome things that live not just on our property, but you remember the connectivity to uh, to our neighbors to the north, where you know if, if you're a Dunkin' Donuts person, you have that option too, and uh, you know and it's uh, and then you have another access to uh, to an egress uh, by way of uh, the 250 uh, entrance there, just across the street from uh, from Platinum. Right. Okay. And on the east end of the building. Was it about 40% uh, food type services? So it'd be, the, the food service uh, would be split into, into two small formats. And we call the category to be their, their uh, culture driving, I hate to use the word fast casual, but they're a little more rhythmic culture driving retail. Like use. a core life or something like that? Yes, and I, and I will uh, elicit approval to, um, to make mention of them at the next meeting. Or, or, or when we submit the use uh, details for the space, I'll, I'll, include, I'll, I'll include the, uh, the, the entities Ooh, themselves. Yep. Uh, but the food use would be split into two small uh, programs, about uh, a little over 2,000 and about 1,500. Okay. Bob, any questions? Yeah, I had a <clears throat> question and then a comment. Um, you talked about the existing dumpster area, and I believe that's right next to the Starbucks drive through Is that the location where the current one is? Uh, or uh, uh, at, at what we would what we were going to do with this building? So the Starbucks dumpster will be exclusive to Starbucks. Okay. Um, I don't want any. Uh, refuge being uh, moved across the center corridor of the vehicular moving uh, environment there, that main parking bay. Right. Uh, so, so where have, would your so we we have four. If you look uh, if you look at the western uh, property line, uh, if just down 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 right there where the hand is. Those are two back-to-back -back giant okay. dumpsters. I'm going to repro I'm going to completely reprogram them. If you've seen any dumpster that I've built in the last 20 years. They're nicer than the, they're as nice as the buildings. Same materials. Uh, we've designed them to be a little more practical to the way that the the refuge containers are being picked up. Uh, the first thing to go on my are my dumpsters are my doors because uh, it's it's tough yeah. keeping your speed and shutting them. So we have new mechanical systems that open and close them safely, um, and help encourage the proper use and, and keeping and keeping them clean. The better. The more attention we pay to the dumpster enclosures, we found the more uh, kind of empathy we build or pride of ownership with the people who use them. Uh, and that would be the case here. We'll, we're going to keep them, we're going to make them look brand new, and they're going to be designed uh, to be uh, as clean as humanly possible. So th the intent is that those would serve <coughs> that building um, adequately at that location, Abs at that location. The, okay. they're, the two enclosures just right there yeah. are, over, are oversized. They could, they could service another 50,000 square feet of, of mix, mixed use. Okay. I did, you know, Jim, Jim mentioned charging stations. I did want to mention most projects will use a level two charging station, and you may or, not, may or may not be aware that there are there is funding available through both NYSERDA and RGE. RGE has a program, 
and it really falls into two categories workplace charging for employees mm -hmm. where the cars are there eight hours whatever the shift is and then others located you know if you deem that you want to put some in for public use so uh, I will announce this tonight uh, for the first time. I don't, I'm not even sure my father knows about this yet, but uh, we've recently uh, consummated a deal with Rivian, mm -hmm. not for the purpose of retail, but for the purpose of creating an East Coast culture hub. We have found that through our research and through the resources you, you have also described, that it may behoove us to introduce level three chargers as they allow for that kind of transient use. Correct. They're cooler for the people who are it also for the you know and and you want pop culture to live on this a little bit because you want it to be you want to encourage the use or enjoyment of them penfield has a very young population mm -hmm. there's a responsibility to have these features here because this is how you teach connectivity between what they see or hear about and the practical use of the same i don't want rochester to be adopting these things 10 years later than everybody else so we're making these efforts to improve this property because we believe that we deserve it. And so we will not be instituting uh, L2s. You'll, you'll likely see superchargers on, on, our, on our property. And because of the, how many there are to recapitalize this in the future, it's totally worth it. We don't pass that expense on to our tenants. It is a responsibility that we bear as property owners. Yeah, and, and the level two, they can be anywhere from 25 kW right. up to 350. Um, but you may still want to consider for employees, you don't need a level two, or uh, you level don't three. need a level right. three for employees. A level two, the fact that the car may be there eight hours. Right. Yeah. And, and those are the ones that are traditionally uh, adaptable to those programs that you, just, you described. Correct. Yep. Correct. And so we'll, we'll, we'll likely have a mix. Okay. Um, but, but what we're trying to do is, is almost treat this like a... Um, like a pitch, a pitch deck where you're trying to you're trying to sell the campus. Sure. And the more features the campus has, the more likely we'll be able to cultivate customers and make our existing patrons really proud to uh, to use the, the, the facilities. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this point, I'd like to open up the discussion to those in the audience. If anyone in the audience would like to speak to this application, uh, please. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. And while she's on her way up, if there's anybody that's not here, I will repeat the phone number. It's 585-340-8771. And you can also submit electronically at penfield.org. Okay, if you Hi, could state uh, your name. My name is Donna Spinella. Um, I was uh, pleased to hear that you are interested in having um, a connection to Harris Whalen Park and um, bike hosting and also some EV charging stations. And I'm wondering if you have considered, I don't really know the exact square footage and layout of your roofing system, but if you've considered solar arrays on your roofs to sort of go along with this whole um, kind of more environmentally friendly um, uh, set of uh, uh, retail establishments you're, you're considering? So, uh, it, if, I, if I may, it, I'd, I'd like to open up a little bit of the mechanics behind the scenes to why a lot of these decisions are made. At the, in the trade area of 215, 441, it has statistics that are incredibly impressive. The performance of all, of, or the large majority of the, the businesses in that corridor are phenomenal. Unfortunately, the rents that are we're able to yield to build out the space, create the facilities to service them, and things like that, they don't they don't follow at that same pace. And so there's always there's always value engineering or opportunity cost by way of that. So what we do to not have to value engineer, to not have to create such profound opportunity costs, is to design so we don't preclude that in the future. If there are opportunities for uh, subsidies or grants that allow us to be able to underwrite these things, the first, the first responsibility that I have to do is to get that structure there so I can have a home that is marketable for a business that should be in that trade area. The second should be by way of hopefully the movement of the lease up and the performance of the businesses is be able to use that to institute everything you just described. In a perfect world, it would all happen at once because how awesome would that be to have this amazing series of things that, sh that show one comprehensive 
attachment to sustainability, to the intelligent use of technology, to be able to share it, not just for our youth. I, 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 think, I think it's amazing. You know, I, I think that it's something that, re, that offers an opportunity to rethink about the way that we compose these types of developments. Solar is a very important topic to us. Uh, we've been purchasing uh, solar flowers. I have one active at our Riverwood campus in Henrietta, if, if you're ever up for a field trip. Uh, they, they service almost every EV station we have out there and then push the balance out into the grid, which is pretty cool. Um, and so we're finding large and small ways to bring this technology in for its practical and functional purpose, but also to show how we can, in pieces, bring this to, uh, to, our, pro to our projects. We have found that there are a lot of organizations out there that are, that are very excited to, to partake in putting the solar uh, features on our roofs. The cost of that and the way that they control the free use of your asset is prohibitive. And for me, where you know, these are my babies, this is my, my, this is, you know, my, my, my pride of ownership is real here, I can't lose that much control. So I have to find a way to play a larger role in it and unfortunately, and especially in our market, it takes a little bit more time. So what I try to do is capture momentum. And I also use guilt mechanics. I practice it in these boards, like the ones we're sitting at right now. So I, that I hope that the path to our success and approval and being able to do these cool things is a little quicker. And that is literally my life's work, is to try, is to, try to accelerate time here. Okay. But that is a priority to us. I just I cannot promise it by way of these approvals because I'm working so hard just to just to get this this um, thing completed, and uh, and and we have a, an awesome thing where we have a really old property that is continues to find new life, and uh, and I and I, and that will be a part of this, I promise you. Okay, may I ask a, an address a, a question to Bob? Mm -hmm. Bob, since you have been so involved in sort of bringing um, these technologies, you know, to our to our awareness here in Penfield, uh, is there any uh, effort on the part of uh, any entity within the town to uh, facilitate uh, the development or you know the, the the utilization of things like solar or other sustainable forms of energy when? either new construction is being done or when um, sort of a big refurb is being done on an older building? I, I can't speak specifically for the town, but at both the state and the federal level, there are incentives from NYSERDA for solar and there is a 30% tax credit that's currently in effect on the federal level. So any corporation, individual, can take advantage of the 30% tax credit. Um, you know, just looking at this project and this building, what goes through my head is the building load from a electrical load standpoint, and there really isn't that much real estate on that building that would create a significant amount of energy to really offset what the building requires. Um, but there's other programs in place that customers can use, whether it be community solar or other opportunities where um, they may be using other solar generated power in the state of New York to power their businesses. And those programs are continually growing. So, um, you know, for the developer, you know, personally I see that, you know, there's so many moving parts to a project and um, that's another one that can be looked at, but I think, you know, it sounds like you've probably thought of that and what the, the value that would bring to the project. W without question, and just, just yeah. to clarify, so what Bob was very accurate in capturing with this, the, the size of the roof area where we could ins institute the solar, we wouldn't have the scalar economies to have any yield 
any, any real yield from it. It just won't, it just won't pay off. Yeah, that's why I kind right. of prefaced it by saying I don't know what the square right. footage of your roof it's, is. Yeah, so it's, so it's uh, of the 10,000 feet, a uh, significant portion of it is pitched. And, and the areas where it's not, we, we try to hide and dampen all of anything that makes noise. So, so we use that to, to, to host the mechanicals. And that's why I brought up the example of the solar flower, because that sits alone, and it right. chases the sun. And they're so cool to look at. Um, and they're designed for a four-season climate. They have bristles, and they literally shake when they have ice and snow on it to, to knock it off. Um, so you're going to see us use things like that. But br uh, Bob brought up another really good point, which is um, the opportunity to start converting where we're driving our electric from. So we've started to diversify between wind and, and, and solar. And we have made a movement to, uh, to start applying that across the entirety of our portfolio. Good. Thanks. I, I, should, I should point out maybe a lot of people may not be aware, but the system has probably been up for over five years. The Macy's down at Eastview, that roof is completely covered with solar panels on that roof. Now, there's a facility, it's basically HVAC and lighting in that building, but there's a tremendous amount of surface area on that roof. and. Whomever owns that building, you know, it made economic sense to do it at the time. Um, so there are different businesses, you know, you really may not see it because that that building has a, the whole top parapet is pretty much, you know, shields it, but uh, that whole building is covered with panels. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience care to comment on this application? Okay, let me check. Refresh our screens here. Okay, looks like we have nobody online or on the phone. Any other comments from the board? Questions? No. Oh, I think at this time I'd like to uh, move to table the application to permit the the applicant to, to bring forward some uh, uh, new and refreshing information. Incredible. Thank you all for the all time. Right, I appreciate second. it. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. Thanks for coming. And um, well, we have a motion on the floor. He seconded. Bob seconded. Yeah. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. An hour, aye. Okay, well, we will call this hearing closed. Thank you for coming. And uh, we should potentially talk about some uh, points to bring up in the tabling resolution. Yeah. About uh, um, finalized landscaping plans and uh, some of the other points that they brought up. Well, it sounds to me like he's <clears throat> James has already got a handle on it. There, uh, you know, a, as he was describing the uh, revisions, he he uh, realized that he was too late to get it to us. Uh, in time for us to uh, to review and, and react, um, but you know, there's a couple of things I noticed. I, I, I noticed a, a potential um, problem with the uh, um, ADA ramps on the south side of the building. Um, you know, I always like to check that reveal on the curb because every year in our area, um, people hit the gas when they think they're hitting the brake and they jump the curb and right damaged buildings and so when you've got seating areas out in front um, yeah, you want to make sure that you know, somebody doesn't don't, they want to mow down, mow down the patrons or the employees right um, and uh, yeah tying tying in the uh, uh, the planting schedule with the comments that Bruce brought up and um, and and all the all this dialogue about the EV stations is great but it makes a whole lot of sense to me not to tie this application to that. Okay. I did, I had one thing that came to mind. It, it shows some pedestrian walkways like between 
the building to the south, to the mm -hmm. plaza. And Starbucks would, was mentioned. I don't know if there would be a benefit or if engineering's looked at any marked walkways to the east. I'll say so from Starbucks over to the building? Yeah. Is a crosswalk or something along those lines? Because there is, I think, before the Starbucks building, it looks like there's a <coughs> pedestrian access across. Right, they would probably walk to the south and go in front of the plaza, and then there is a sidewalk that goes to the east towards Starbucks, in front yeah. of Starbucks. Yeah, I think that's the main okay. access drive. That pedestrian access is primarily for Starbucks workers to get to the dumpsters. Right. Yeah, this is not a uh, this is not a pedestrian friendly Starbucks. This this is really more of a drive up drive through um, Starbucks. Well, the applicant mentioned the tenants of the building going over to Starbucks. Possibly. Well, it, but he also right. mentioned that he specifically yeah. didn't want them crossing uh, the parking lot there to get to that dumpster. So. Um, would make sense, but. Okay, but if it looks like there is a route. Of course, people formally, are I think people, people are gonna walk wherever People are gonna walk it where they're gonna yeah. walk, regardless of whether there's, there's a sidewalk. Walkway or not. Um, yeah, okay. It's something, something to consider in the, res, you know, bring it up. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly something we can address. Can't hurt. Was real. This was this was really more of a kind of detailed preliminary application than it was uh, preliminary final. You know, they've got some work to do yet. Yeah. I believe that they did talk to the town board about the connection to the park, but I yes. don't know if they ever yeah. talked to this board about yeah, it. I'm, yeah, I'm aware. I think that that's an interesting idea. I don't know really any of the details of it, so I don't, we don't really have yeah, jurisdiction. I'm aware of some that. dialogue going on there. And, you know, I, I hate to see the repurposing of this building, which is very much needed. I, the building's been languishing. It's you know kind of tucked in the back, and um, I hate to see that get tied down by something that could potentially um, take a long time to uh, to process. There could be a, a lot of public comment about that. So it makes more sense to me to to keep the application clean the way it is, and and you know take that part of. I mean, it's not part of the application now but maybe just take that piece out of it. Keep it clean. Okay. If they're gonna modify that site plan with a connection, they'd have to come back before the board anyhow. Uh, is that us or would that be a town board deal, right? Um, I think it, it would be a joint, both. it'd probably be a joint application. Joint. Um, the town board would have to be involved for the use of public land and the planning board would likely be involved for Site plan, um, some form of site plan, right? Depending on the timing of the conditional use permit, and whether or not it would come back here or um, go to the zoning board, too, is uh, another question. I mean, if they if they know who, if they if they are ready to make that application, they can probably do like an amended application here. It still would require a public hearing on that, and then they could keep everything before yeah. the planning board, but. Um, I think the zoning board is the other. If you don't have a companion application, I think that's where they would go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, for conditional use, yeah. All right. So we're good? Any other? I think we're good. I've got a few, th I've got a few things for the number of notes. Okay. Tabling application. Good. Well, then we will adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming. See you in a couple weeks. Just Weeks. FYI, I'm going to be in Springfield, Massachusetts that 